Hi, thanks for inviting me to do this interview. Um, the first question is uh, to provide a brief background of myself. So here goes. I have a computer science education and software development background, which in the last 20 years has been primarily devoted to supply chain management applications. This came about through collaboration with my husband, Professor David Simchilevi from MIT, who's a well-known supply chain expert. Our collabor collaboration has been both on the business side as well as through some very well-received books such as Designing and Managing the Supply Chain, which is a textbook. In our first company, Logic Tools, we developed software for network design, inventory optimization, and a few other applications. The company was sold to iLog in 2007 and is now part of IBM Business Analytics Solutions. It's very gratifying to know that our software has been used by over 350 companies and also by over 50% of the AMR, now Gartner, top 50 supply chain performers. This was a very interesting experience uh, because we could see how companies were using uh, decision support systems, as they were called at the time, for the first time to solve uh, supply chain problems. And building the models provided a common platform for them to agree on various costs, and the ability to see some unexpected results from the models helped create a deeper understanding for them of the drivers and costs uh, and trade-offs in, in their supply chains. Currently, I'm the VP operations of our second venture, which is called Ops Rules Partners, and this is a supply chain and operations strategy consulting company. We are collaborating with experienced consulting professionals and analytic experts to provide um, a data-driven analytic approach to operation strategy that can lead to long-term transformation. Many of the ideas we're promoting are based on David's recent book, Operations Rules, which also explains the name of the company. Uh, the book highlights the scientific rules of how supply chains work, as well as provides a new approach to crucial operations topics such as complexity, risk, and flexibility. Uh, this is answer to the question number two, uh, what are analytics and why are they important? So in, in the last few years, uh, we've seen an increase of interest in analytics in many areas of business. And part of the interest is probably driven just by the increased availability of data from various sources. Some of it is from enterprise resource planning systems. Some of it is the so-called big data that's emanating from the Internet and social media, uh, e-commerce and in the supply chain context from sensors and RFID tags. So, and I think the other reason there's interest is obviously, you know, the capabilities in, in uh, analytics themselves have, uh, have improved uh, uh, quite a lot uh, in the sense that you can solve uh, bigger problems uh, uh, much faster. So uh, how do we define analytics, uh, especially in the context of supply chain? I would say it's various mathematical techniques that are used to solve problems. And these problems uh, are, for instance, network design, which is we typically use optimization techniques. Uh, if you're doing warehouse design, you would use simulation. Uh, if you're doing um, forecasting, it involves a lot of statistical methods. So what you can see from here is, is that there um, is a deep need to match not only knowledge of um, mathematical techniques, but also knowledge of the domain. So this is why there are a lot of opportunities, but also you know, it's, not, it's not a very uh, simple thing to do. And it, you know, if you're asking um, why, why this is important, Obviously, this is an area of uh, huge opportunity and competitive advantage for, for many companies, and uh, it, it allows them not only to understand you know, what, what their business is doing, but also come up with uh, new solutions and ideas for wh where they are going. So obviously, uh, analytics is a very, very important uh, component of that, and doing that in a smart way is, is obviously a huge advantage. Um, this is the question, who needs to take analytics into consideration in supply chain and operations strategy? So before I answer the question, I'd just like to talk about what makes analytics uh, in supply chain and operations uh, more important and practical now. Um, the, f the first one is that complexity has increased for companies due to globalization and the Internet. 
So companies have more products, more locations, more channels, and more markets that are part of the mix. And this creates a lot of new challenges that require new tools. And uh, David likes to say that uh, common sense consulting is not enough anymore. And the second thing is that there is uh, more data available, uh, as I said before, from uh, ERP systems and, uh, and, and other sources. And the third is that the computing speed has increased, uh, as well as in-memory technologies that speed up data access. So analytics are much more practical and uh, deployable. Uh, the, the other thing is that there are many new methods and, and uh, techniques that uh, are around and but really haven't been deployed uh, widely, and they can be a huge asset to improve performance. So we know that analytics have been pl played an important role in supply chain operations uh, for a long time. Applications, you know, demand forecasting, transportation routing, inventory optimization, network design, and these have been a while around for a while. But there are also areas of new opportunity that can benefit, uh, such as supply chain segmentation, risk management, complexity reduction, manufacturing fl flexibility, uh, all of which are, you know, very Im important uh, to companies. So what we see is that there's a lot of interest from C-level managers in uh, procurement, supply chain operations, uh, in using analytic tools to better understand their operations and provide some uh, much-needed improvements. And the other thing that we see is that they really like these skills to be part of their organization. So they don't have a lot of interest in uh, just using spreadsheet solutions uh, or people just coming and going. They, they really want this to be embedded in... Uh, in their um, long-term strategy. This is the second part of uh, the response to the question, how to approach analytics. In the first part, I talked about uh, you know, our methodology. Uh, so in this part, I'd like to actually provide an example of a recent uh, project that we did with PepsiCo Worldwide Flavors uh, on end-to-end -end op inventory optimization, which will you know, give some uh, concrete examples to uh, some of the concepts I talked about before. So PWF uh, recently went through a reorganization that led to reassessment of inventory in the manufacturing plants. And they have a multitude network of three plants, four distribution centers in the U.S. serving both the U.S. and Canadian markets. They have 450 finished goods and 1781 components and raw materials. So this is not something that could be done easily, you know, and this is kind of the complexity of uh, real-life systems. So uh, management realized that uh, this uh, complex multi-level supply chain network could not be fully optimized using single echelon optimization metho methods, and they chose to work with uh, ops rules and deploy an end-to-end -end inventory optimization process, or sometimes this is called multi-echelon optimization. So uh, as we discussed before, the initial part of the process is to create a validated baseline model of PepsiCo's network. And uh, after that is, is uh, completed, uh, you can also create optimized models of the baseline. So you take the baseline and optimize just that based on all the assumptions that, that, that are in the baseline. And that provides um, another element to, to the uh, process of understanding the supply chain. And the next step, as I mentioned before, is the most creative part where you plan the various scenarios that will uncover um, information about the drivers of in inventory in the PepsiCo supply chain. So the, our first discovery through this process was that most of the excess inventory was in raw materials at the plant. So the next question is what to do about that. and uh, we devised several scenarios to see what was driving that raw material inventory. So some of the ideas included uh, improve, improving demand forecast, that always seems to come up, uh, elimin eliminating some packaging options to reduce complexity. That, that's always probably a good idea. And then um, changing the frequency and size of production ba batches. You know, obviously, that can help with managing inventory. And finally, analyzing the impact of lead times. This is the supplier lead times that, that can impact, obviously, the raw material. So we examined what would happen if we changed um, 
all these parameters, but in particular, um, we looked at the supplier lead times uh, and, you know, played around with reducing or increasing it, and it actually turned out that there wasn't a huge impact uh, for that. And uh, then we looked at another factor that is sometimes neglected, but it's pretty intuitive, and, and that is uh, looking at the actual lead time variability. So lo looking at, you know, not what the stated lead time, but, you know, where it was uh, probably too late or sometimes too early, which obviously makes planning difficult. And we discovered that reducing lead time variability, even by little, had a very significant impact on total supply chain costs and reducing inventory. So the implication for this for uh, Pepsi, which was not what they expected, they were looking more at the you know, demand forecast and packaging and all these things as the drivers. But what they found is that they really need to work with their suppliers to improve performance and better focus on on-time delivery. And obviously this wasn't what they expected, but it, it was a very good insight and obviously a very successful project. So th this is an example of you know the kind of um, ideas that uh, come up using this methodology and a little bit of what it takes. I mean, it, obviously there's a lot of data collection and uh, and work involved in in, in doing this. But uh, if you deploy this kind of process and then bring in some of this uh, you know knowledge in house to continue doing that, uh, you know. You could probably leverage this uh, very successfully to create you know, a competitive and uh, cost-effective supply chain.